Welcome back to the YouTube channel, ladies and gentlemen. Today I'm talking about gouge and hiatal hernia. These are the things that I suffer from and have held me back in life for a very long time, but I'm making a change. Um, boom. What is it? It's a very common thing, but for me, it's a mad thing. And what it is, is a digestive disorder and it works in your lower esophageal sphincter. So your esophagus is basically a pipe that runs down your throat which leads into your stomach and there's a ring at the bottom. Now that gets relaxed sometimes and it allows stomach acid to shoot back up. My case is a little more severe because I've had it since I was six months old and it goes bad then it gets good then it goes bad then it gets good then it goes bad then it gets good and it stays bad most of the time. No one really sees the effects of it. Not even my family members have seen the effects of it the way that my wife has seen it because she shares a bed with me and she hears me complaining at night. Ain't that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the acid in your stomach which is produced is called bile. And this can get worse by so many different kinds of foods. What's the point? Is that a comment? How does it affect the body? The way it affects the body is it can make you very angry. Which has been evident in my life. The things that it can cause common symptoms are heartburn, chest pain, you get a sensation of having a lump in your throat, you can vomit a lot, which I do, which everyone who knows me experiences, right? How fun is it? Tell them. It's so fun. Okay. You can develop a chronic cough, which I have as well. Um, you can get laryngitis from it, which is basically inflammation of your voice box. So sometimes I get a very croaky voice and I get a sore throat which is not nice. The main thing which has affected me for a long time is disrupted sleep and this can cause insomnia and insomnia is not fun because it can affect your mental health as well and when it affects your mental health everything in your day feels bad everything in your life feels bad and then you start to feel like all oh, my days I hate myself and it but I don't hate myself love yourself is the, the, the main thing. But the second thing I have is called a hiatal hernia now what that is it's a condition which I think developed as the years went by because the acidity was something that I had since six months old. Because my mum said when I was a baby I was vomiting, as I got older I was vomiting. Basically there was just a lot of vomiting going on everywhere. Like I vomited on people, I vomited in cars, I vomited in public places, I vomited on myself, I vomited in the bed. It was lovely. Not really. Okay, so hiatal hernia is basically your stomach pushes through your diaphragm. Now the diaphragm splits the chest cavity and your abdomen. Now my stomach isn't sitting normally. It goes up into my esophagus which plays with gastroesophageal reflux disease and makes life a lot worse for me. Because the, the symptoms of it are similar to GERD, 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 which my cousins find a stupid word. And I do so a little bit. Um, it causes heartburn, difficulty swallowing, chest and abdominal pain. It can cause shortness of breath. And this one mainly causes the vomiting as well. But I think because my stomach overproduces acid so much, that plays hand in hand with it. And it's not really that fun. You can also have black poo, which is blood in your poo. It sounds weird saying that on camera, isn't it? <laughs> Okay, Ooh. Um, so foods to avoid when you have my conditions is that oranges, lime. grapefruit, lime, lemons, um, things that will shock you as well caffeine, mint, chocolate, garlic, onions, tomatoes. I love all these things, so it's a bit depressing. Fizzy drinks, citrus drinks, alcohol, I don't drink because I'm Muslimic. Things like antibiotics, aspirins, processed foods, so foods like salamis and sausages and burgers, like um, beef burgers, processed beef burgers, peppermint, spearmint, and there was a whole bunch of other stuff in all the things that I've read that I can't really pronounce, so I'm not going to say it. If you want to see you, more than welcome to type in gastroesophageal reflux disease, foods to stay away from, and it will come up on Google. Yeah, when uh, you suffer with my condition, which are quite beneficial which I've started eating more now in the last two three weeks and I've noticed the difference are um, 
vegetables which are low in sugar and fat so things specifically like green beans broccoli asparagus cauliflower uh, potatoes cucumbers these are all very good for you and non-acidic fruits things like watermelon kiwis quick fact about kiwis if you eat two kiwis before you go to sleep um, consistently then it can help with insomnia and I've been doing that and it has been helping in it I've been sleeping more um, snoring what? You've been snoring. Yeah, but that's not fat. <laughs> uh, things like ginger are very good for you because it's anti-inflammatory. Now, when you have hiatal hernia and good, your stomach lining, your esophagus lining, so the tube in your throat, it gets inflamed, so it swells up. Ginger is very good for that. Now, you can make um, ginger smoothies and ginger things like that. I, I don't do that because it tastes nasty. I should but I don't. Things like oatmeal, um, it's whole grain source of fibre and it's been linked that if your uh, diet is high in fibre, it lowers the acid. Fruits, I don't know if I covered the fruits, things like melon, banana, yeah? What? Watermelon is very good, I love watermelon. Bananas, apples, pears and lean meats should be a staple. Especially on this channel, if you're watching for the purpose of losing weight, or gaining muscle and things, lean meats and seafood are very good for you. So things like chicken, turkey, fish, there's so many different types of fish that you can eat. You've got bassa, salmon, tilapia, tilapia, um, cod. What's your Bengali one? The one that your mum made for me that was banging. I don't know what fish that is. It's not hutki for all the Asian people watching. Because <laughs> um, that's got a lot of chilli in it, isn't it? It's basically mashed fish. Dry. Dry mashed fish. I married Bengali. Um, make sure your food is baked, grilled, boil, broiled, or then poached, and this will be very beneficial for you. Egg whites are very good. Um, some studies say that the yolk has a lot of cholesterol in it, but a lot of bodybuilders and stuff that I've watched and researched over the years, they say it carries healthy fats as well, but that's a difference of opinion. So I'm not really going to say do that or don't do that. That you can research yourself. I'm here to just kind of give the basic guideline for it right now. Healthy fats. Now, I know I said stay away from fats, but the fats that I mean are saturated fats and trans fats. These are unhealthy oils. <laughs> like, you know when you cook an oil, it brings out the trans fats in it. When you leave it in its rawest form, things like olive oil, um, sunflower oil, and many more, they're really good for you if you have them as like a salad dressing and stuff. But getting back to the healthy fats, fish carries a lot of healthy fats in it as well. So you can have things like avocados, walnuts, flax seeds, so many other things. Also, a very good remedy is turmeric milk. Now, we Asians call it honey dude. My sister is a very firm believer in this. She has honey dude shots, turmeric milk shots. What you do is get a quarter teaspoon of turmeric. If you're allergic to any of this stuff, do not do it. I'm just saying it for the purpose of health benefits for the people that can have it. Get a quarter teaspoon of turmeric, mix it into milk, add honey and heat that up. It's very good for you. That's also anti-inflammatory. Um, also another two things is Elasi, Elaiji, cardamom, cardamom is always good, and fennel seeds. Fennel seeds are very good for sickness. I suffer from sickness every single day. I vomit acid, I vomit food, I vomit whatever wants to be in my system, I will vomit it. There is no limitation. And it is, um, cardamom and fennel seeds are very good for that. They help take away no nauseous feelings. Smoking is bad, but I am an idiot. I don't know if you can read this. It wasn't directed very good, was it? Like, positioning-wise and stuff. But if you can, I'm an idiot. I smoke cigarettes. It's very, 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 very bad for you. In general, if you have this condition or any other condition, just don't smoke. Just don't smoke overall. And also, it kills you financially. I have worked out how much money I've spent on cigarettes over the years that I've been smoking. And boy, it makes you want to slap yourself in the face. It makes you want to burn the cigarette on your face, but then I smoke it instead. It's not good, don't smoke. Okay, um, also, the fishes that I was talking about, my mother-in-law sent the name, but it's not in English, it's called 
Rupsanda and Ruimas. So if there's any Bengali people out there that know the translation in English, please do let us know so that I can let everyone else know. Now, I have an Asian brown person remedy which my mum gives me, which I was talking about, the stomach stuff, Tukmuri. So the Asian names are Tukmuri, Isabgol, Harlow and Kalonji. Tukmuri is basically basil seeds in its rawest form. Now what this does, it cools down your stomach and it cools down the sensation of having heartburn. Isabgol is called Ficillium. Now this has a lot of digestive aid to it. It helps with going to the toilet and a lot more. I, I'm sorry, I, I'm just going off the top of my head right now. Um, Harlow are called cereal seeds. These also cool down the stomach. You could go online and check all these things out and you can get the benefits from them yourself or I'll list them for you in the description. And then you've got Kalonji, which is onion seeds, which is also known as black seed. And you can find this in many forms. You can get black seed or you can get black seed in its rawest form. Now, from an Islamic perspective, they say that black seed oil can cure everything except for death. Okay, so does Jim help? Jim does help, yes. But there's many different factors to it. Now, when you do uh, heavy lifting, anything that causes pressure on your abdomen, so you got your main things like deadlifts, squats, um, even doing planks, leg, hanging leg raises, certain things like that. So the, the things that are going to concentrate on your midsection, the things that are around your stomach, they are going to have a negative effect. Exercises which contribute to abdominal pressure, these things can make acid shoot back up. Now, because I've got two things, obviously, I've got GERD and hiatal hernia, they play hand in hand. And when I was younger, I used to do a lot of powerlifting and I felt invincible. But as the years went on and my condition worsened, I had to stop training and I gained a lot of weight. In my peak condition, I think I was 85, around 82 to 85 kilos. And when I gained a lot of weight, when I stopped training because I tore my abdomen, my, my condition got worse, everything got worse. I ballooned up to what, 117 kilos was the heaviest that I've ever been. So that was a lot. And it's not a nice feeling having all that pressure when you sleep because you snore as you lay back. They say when you have gastroesophageal reflux disease, hashtag GERD, they say sleep upright because when you're on a slant, your acid isn't shooting back up. Your it's, it's all flowing downwards. But obviously, I haven't made the best decisions in my life. Pizza. I love pizza, but I can't have pizza all the time anymore. One, because it's got yeast in it and I don't think my body reacts good to yeast. Two, it's got tomato base. Now, tomato, if you go on Google and type in things to avoid when you have good... Tomato comes at the top all the time. Tomato and onions. Now, when you're Asian and you're Pakistani, you come from a culture like mine, you love curries. And the main base of curries is tomato and onions, which is screwing. I can't lie, I still have it, but in moderation. Boom. That part is done. Now I'm going to talk to you about how it's affected my life.